I'm James Jones. You might best know me as host of Radio Free Nintendo, and I want to welcome you cordially to the 2020s. I have been inspired lately. There has been an absolute onslaught. <sighs> Onslaught's a too negative word. Uh, there's been an absolute uh, abundance, that's a word we'll use, of content attempting to really get to a core question of what were the best games of the 2010s. There's something about round numbers that the human mind contextualizes well. Maybe it's because that's the number of fingers we have, and so it's the first counting metric we've got. Maybe it's just it's just something innate that made base 10 work. And while most systems are base 10, they're obviously non-base 10 systems, but we're getting distracted. We're getting distracted. I felt like it was my solemn duty as the host of the world's most necessary Nintendo podcast. It's really the, the only way to describe it. Um, to weigh in with my esteemed opinion on what were the best games of the 2010s. And I'm going to limit myself, of course, to Nintendo systems because that's my area of purview. And while my opinion would certainly carry significant weight in all fields, uh, in this field in particular, it is unassailable. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at what were the best games, the 10 best games specifically, because if you count more than 10, you're being weird, of the 2010s. And first, let's get... Hmm. Hmm. There's an asterisk here. You see that? There's an asterisk. Let's, let's, uh, let's take a look at what that is, because that's a little odd. All right, so let's take it open and paint. This title card, I don't... You see the asterisk right here. I don't know what to make of that. Um, troubling. Uh, let's zoom in. Let's zoom in. Maybe we can figure it out. We're, we're not going to find it up in Link's hair. So let's zoom and look for it. Oh, wait. Oh, hold on. Down here. It was hiding behind Itsuki's hair. Let's take a look and see what that detail is. Biration. Oh, of course. Of course, of course, of course, of course. It, it's totally slipped my mind. That's my mistake. I apologize. We are using the time-honored metric of rating games, the percentage of the cover that is devoted to Wario. It is, it is one of the most surefire methods of assessing quality, and it is a shame that that uh, metric hasn't really been explored yet for things outside of the gaming space, but... This is James Jones Presents, the top 10 games of the 2010s by ratio of Wario on the cover. So I've gone ahead and identified all of the Wario-based Wario -based software that has come out in the 2010s. Wario-based, Wario-featured software. Unfortunately, more games haven't uh, taken a step towards featuring Mr. Wario as their core artwork, but... We'll start with WarioWare Gold. I believe, I believe, and unfortunately I don't have the numbers in front of me. That's my mistake. This game came out in about 2017. And you can see that Wario is front and center. As would make sense, this is his game. So the question is, what percentage of this screen is Wario? You, you could eyeball it's maybe about 20%, but this is too important to eyeball. Let's go ahead and take a look at some math. So we can do that pretty quick. Um, we know the area of this box is 136 because paint.net tells us. So let's go ahead and do some math, shall we? Yes, we shall. That about 15% of this box is WarioWare. And we're going to use this, this metric throughout the process. And so I wanted to make sure I explained it early and that we can kind of jump over it as a formality going forward. So, WarioWare Gold is our current best game of the 2010s at 15% Wario based Wario based covers. It's a good start for the process. So let's resume our exploration with the next game. Mario Sports Mix. Let's go ahead and identify our Wario. And you might miss him. You might miss him. Because he's in the back here, and I don't understand why you would do that. He is Wario. He is the metric by which all games are measured for their quality. But we have a 13,000 pixel Wario here. 
And we see that this dreadful percentage really is only about 2.3% of Wario. Unfortunately, right now, that's good enough for number two. So, Mario Sports Mix is your second best game of the 2010s for now. Our number three game for evaluation, Mario Party Star Rush. This came out a few years ago. Um, you can see that Wario is over here. He is being blocked, absolutely blocked by this horrific green thing. Uh, the total image size for this image, in case we're curious, is 883,000 pixels. Um, those of you who aren't following along, that's how we're doing the math. That comes out to about 2.8%. So we're going to round up just because it's science is important, but we're, we're also fudging some numbers here a little bit. Um, and that makes it actually our second best game. It has jumped Wario, uh, Mario Sports Max. Next up, Mario and Sonic at the Rio Summer Olympics. So let's go ahead and find our Warios. And you can see... Wah is hanging out up here. Our our dear esteemed friend and expert, ping pong expert specifically, so, excuse me, uh, Mr. Wario is hanging out in the corner up here, which is a good place for him when you think about it. It's a, it's a good, uh, he's centered right under the Olympics, which he is obviously a, a uh, exemplary example of, unlike, say, the entire Russian Federation. Um, Wario is taking up about of 15,000 pixels out of 565,000 pixels. After review, we can see that Wario is at about 2.6%, 2.7% of the box. Uh, so again, we're kind of hovering around this 2% number, which is just, it's kind of a travesty because there's so many opportunities to put Wario in places of prominence. But this is science, not my personal opinion. We are assessing the best game of the decade. And this is the most uh, scientific approach to doing it. And so we're going to continue on. Mario Party Island Tour. So again, this is a 3DS Mario Party game. Once again, you can see that Wario is being obscured by this green monstrosity. Yet again. An absolute, absolute unforgivable. In terms of ratio of the size, let's take a look. After running some quick numbers, we can see that Wario is taking up about 2.03% of the real estate on the box. Which is an absolute tiny amount of space. Unfortunately, I've not been doing a great job tracking decimal places. That was a mistake by me and will be rectified in the next decade. Um, so, first off, I should make sure I note what percentages were on Rio. Uh, I remember Mario Sports Mix was like 2.03. This is 2.05. .2 this is 2.03. So I'm going to go ahead and say this is actually less than Mario Sports Mix. It's tight. It's very tight. And so then these two games are both important, obviously, but one is maybe slightly more important than the other. It, it, it's pretty, it's pretty much the same. Moving on to our next game for evaluation. WarioWare DIY Showcase for the Nintendo DS. This was a game that lets you make your own WarioWare style minigames. And it features Wario in a number of places that are worth noting. You can see he's up here in the little bomb logo that bears his his uh, regal visage over here. Yellow doesn't really show up that great on the screen, but that's okay. And over here, this is this is the key image of Wario on WarioWare DIY. So we're going to use that for our assessment. And we can see that with such a creative and important game, they have appropriately devoted a creative recognition to Wario for his efforts, giving him 11.5% of the box, despite really only representing him sort of in spirit and less in in uh, of his full image. And that means we now have a number two WarioWare DIY jumps all the way to the second most the second best game of the 2010s. What an accomplishment for this project. Mario Party 9. This was the Mario Party that introduced the cars that everyone hates. But that's okay. You know why? Because we're not evaluating it based on how people feel about the cars. We're basing it on the most important metric, the percentage of the screen that belongs 
to the hero, Wario. And you can see that... Oh, I didn't do a great job highlighting it, but you can see that Wario actually gets quite a bit of real estate in this game. You can see that he's got a, a pretty sizable chunk of the box all to himself. And he's not being obstructed by this green idiot again. He's got that space for himself, and I think that's really a statement about the priorities the Mario Party team put. And after some quick numbers, we can see that Wario is at about 17% of this box. That is a impressive accomplishment. And that jumps Mario Party 9 to our new best game of the 2010s. So it's going to be a tough act to follow Mario Party 9, but let's see what the next game has. Mario Party the Top 100. I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. You're saying, I don't see Wario anywhere on here. But, but, trained eyes like mine can spot the truth. Let's take a look. Down. Trained eyes like mine... But trained eyes like mine can find the truth, even in a small image like this. Right here. It's almost not worth highlighting. You might say, well, James, is that all Wario is on this cover? Well, no, actually. You see, he's also featured prominently up here. The problem is there's really almost no point in doing math here. We know this is significantly less than 1%. At less than 1%, Mario Top 100 forms a new floor to our best games of the 2010s. It's still a respectable 8th best game. Next up, Mario and Sonic at the London Olympic Games. This was the second, I believe, Mario and Sonic game. Um, and the first to feature Wario prominently on the cover. And it's not a big feature, we'll be honest. We'll be honest, they didn't entirely understand what they had with Wario, and they just sort of ignored him down there. And that's unfortunate. But we'll do our due diligence and assess Wario's uh, role in this game. And you can see that after we apply the scientific method, he's sitting at 2.09% of the box. And that makes things tricky. 2.09, I believe, puts him above Mario Sports Mix and Island Tour. So we're going to go ahead and say the London Olympic Games is now our sixth best game of the 2010s. But really, still, they don't really appreciate what they have with Wario. And here's our final candidate for the best games of the 2010s. Game and Wario. The Wii U launch game that introduced us to things like Shield Pose. It prominently features Wario. Wario is everywhere on this cover. He is huge and bold and centered. This game is Wario, and you can see it. You can see it right here. We are talking, I would say, at least 85% of this game's box is devoted to Wario. Let's, let's find out. Let's use the scientific method to figure it out. My god, 88.8% of this box is Wario. That's 89%. 89% of this box is devoted to Wario, which is absolutely far and away the highest ranking any game has on our list. And it leaps into the number one spot. So, let's review our top 10 games of the 2010s. At number 10, Mario Party The Top 100 for Nintendo 3DS. At number 9, Mario Party Island Tour. At number 8, Mario Sports Mix. At number 7, Mario and Sonic at the London 2012 Olympic Games. At number 6, Mario and Sonic at the Rio 2016 Olympic Games. At number 5, Mario Party Star Rush. At number 4, WarioWare DIY. Make it yourself. Play it yourself. Do it yourself. At number three, WarioWare Gold. 
our number two game of the 2010s as rated by percentage of the cover that belongs to Wario is Mario Party 9. Hold on, let me, let me fix this real quick. Let me put this, let me set this right. Let me just put this right. Oh, well, it's broken. And the number one game of the 2010s as rated by percentage of cover that belongs to Wario is Game and Wario. The best game of the 2010s. Now, with that, I thank you for joining us on this adventure. This was an educational experience for me, and I hope as well for you. And with that, we can look forward to the 2020s with eyes open, ready to receive Wario-based imagery.